Today, we are going over three dividend stocks in danger of dividend cuts. These are companies that in the next decade, I feel like could have a dividend cut. Some of them have previously had a dividend cut and some of them have been growing their dividend for decades upon decades. But these are just companies I believe for various reasons are going to have dividend cuts in the next decade. Now, before we get into the video, let's roll the intro. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every time. My name is Daniel and my channel is Dividend Dude. You should leave a like and subscribe if you're going to enjoy the video. Throughout the video, we're going to be using the tool DividendData.com, which is the site I use to analyze stocks. Some things I like about Dividend Data are the portfolio tracking and deep financial research that you could do on specific tickers. The portfolio tracking to me is some of the most in-depth out of any stock analysis website, and you can get a 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't enjoy the service. Use the link in the description to get a little deal and check it out. Just a disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I am just a dividend growth investor trying to share my takes on dividend growth stocks and various other stocks. This is not financial or investment advice and always do your own due diligence before investing. First company we have is 3M. Now this company I think is very obvious as a prospectus for being a company that will get a dividend cut. Not only is the company dealing with many lawsuits, but the lawsuits don't seem to be stopping and they seem to just be piling on and piling on. Along with slowed free cash flow and revenue generation, this does create the environment for a dividend cut to be happening in the next decade. And this company has already cut the dividend in the last decade. So honestly, I think they could cut it again. But as you can see, the EPS growth has been stagnant. And if we just analyze this company's key financials, we could clearly see the issue in revenue and free cash flow once this loads. Come on, dividend data. Um, yeah, right here. So as you can see the revenue per share, most of this revenue growth is driven by share buybacks and it's not actually natural revenue growth. As we can see the 10 year CAGR on the revenue growth is 2.7%. This is revenue per share. But if we look at shares outstanding, they've been buying shares back at a rate of about 2% to 3% per year. So really, there is no revenue growth over the last 10 years because this is all share buybacks based. Not only this, but the lawsuits have hurt their margins. As you can see, their net margins are around 15%, just gone negative in the last quarter due to the lawsuit payouts they have had to have been doing. And the free cash flow per share growth is also non-existent, with most of it driven by share buybacks as well. As you can see on both the quarterly and annually chart, the free cash flow has gotten very stagnant and we all know dividends are paid out of free cash flow they are not free money as you could okay wait before we go into that as you could see also the company has a lot of debt granted they have been paying it back but they still have over 10 billion dollars of debt on that balance sheet and if we take a look at the company's dividend their payout ratio still remains above 60 percent so this is a company that i think is in danger of a dividend cut for a multitude of reasons which i've just described and actually, they have not cut the dividend in the last decade. I'm wrongly informed in saying that. But the dividend growth has slowed to less than 1% increases. So this is a company that I think is in danger of a dividend cut for sure. The next company that I think is in danger of a dividend cut is MO or Altria Group. Now, this is going to be a controversial one because as dividend growth investors, a lot of you guys probably own some Altria Group in that portfolio. But one thing with this company that I've discussed in the past is the dying sector of cigarette smokers in the u.s cigarette smokers in the u.s which algae groups main revenue and profit source comes from has been slowing down and that is a fact it is an undisputed fact that it has been slowing down and we could see this in the growth most of their growth is actually driven by new segments and they don't own the most lucrative uh brand names of these new segments the most lucrative name of the new segments is certainly uh zin and they are not ends in that is philip morris completely and they have wasted a lot of capital on jewel now this company obviously has over 50 years of dividend growth so some of you may be easily questioning this but with your main revenue and profit source coming from cigarettes with that being a dying sector in america there's only so much pricing power share buybacks and various things you could do to put off the dividend cut before it happens and i think it's going to happen i don't think this company is going to be able to generate another revenue or profit source as large as cigarettes as it keeps depleting their customers are literally dying because of their product and also just they're old and they're smoking cigarettes that's not a very good combo not to be too harsh i don't actually invest in this company because it is a sin stock and also i just don't think the company's going to do well um but as you can see the revenue growth is also almost 100 percent driven by share buybacks i mean if we 
make the same point. We can look at shares outstanding where they've bought back shares at a rate of three uh, to maybe 2% per year here. And as you can see, the revenue growth over the last years is about 2.7% and actually slowing down. And as you can see, this revenue growth is 100% driven by share buybacks as without them, there's basically no revenue growth. Now the margins with the company do fluctuate, but they're around 25%, maybe 30%. So solid margins for Altria Group there. But if we look at the free cash flow, the company's free cash flow growth is almost all driven by share buybacks as well. And we take a look at the company's free cash flow over the last five or six years, there's been virtually no growth at 3.45%. And that is honestly an issue for me. Also, if we take a look at the company's net debt, they do have a lot of debt on that balance sheet as well. And the, this company's actually been growing the dividend pretty solidly still at a 10-year CAGR of 7% and a five-year CAGR of 4%. Now, if we take a look at the company, they do have a payout ratio of over 70% as well. So this is one that I think is in danger of a dividend cut as well. And now the last company that I do believe to be in danger of a dividend cut is going to be honestly one you guys you guys might uh, laugh at because it is one that has cut the dividend multiple times, but that is MPW and Medical Properties Trust. This is a REIT um, that has absolutely gotten destroyed. Uh, not only because of the news around it, but there's also some short and distort people who keep shorting the company and distorting news about it. I am not one of those people. I present factual things about MPW. And the fact of the matter with MPW is they are in a little bit of a mess, right? Um, not only are, is there a massive shorting going on with stock, some of the investors are hoping for short squeezes, but many of the investors in the stock actually rely on that dividend. And every time that dividend gets cut, the company drops a lot more and the dividend yield is sitting at 14%, and I think very in danger of another dividend cut. They own and operate hospitals around the world, but some of their tenants, primarily Steward Health, have not been able to pay off their rent in full on time. So that has become where the major issue has stemmed from. But not only this, if we just go right to the company's debt, they have an extreme amount of debt, almost $10 billion in debt. When you're talking about a company's market cap being around $2.5 billion, and you have a, a debt of $10 billion, that's an issue. Net debt of $10 billion, that is a very, that, that, that is an issue, right? And the company's dividend, if we take a look at it, it has been cut multiple, or it has been cut already, maybe not multiple times, but it has been cut already. And I think it's going to get cut again down to seven or eight cents or cut completely to zero as the company needs capital. That's what they're essentially looking for. And the payout ratio is all effed up. I mean, it's really, you can't really analyze it right here. And the company's been diluting shareholders for capital. But the problem with this is as shares become cheaper and cheaper, diluting shareholders loses its value. As you can see, they have stopped. So they're figuring out ways to raise capital and paying out that dividend is certainly not going to be something that they want to be doing when they're trying to avoid bankruptcy. So those are the three companies that I believe could get a dividend cut thank you for watching make sure to follow my twitter and x make sure to join my discord server it has been improving very fast thank you guys for watching the video i will see you guys in the next one peace